Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever the case may be. This is Marty Grunder from Grunder Landscaping Company and the Grow Group for FMC True Champions uh, interview. And we have a great friend, a great industry advocate, a great young leader in the green industry with us today, Andrew Zeeler from Zeeler Lawn Care. Um, Andrew, funny story, you and I live like less than a mile away from each other. Uh, you're here in Dayton, Ohio as well. You run one of the largest, most successful uh, lawn care firms here in the area. And we only see each other at uh, industry events. Is that right? That's right. We have traveled all over the, the country or the world to, uh, to latch up, but that just tells you how exciting it is, right? We got to go do that in other places that are beautiful and exciting. And uh, we're, we're, we're making progress on uh, seeing each other uh, at home a lot, a lot more often. Exactly. So looking so forward to it. Now that I said that, I, I'll probably see you at the main intersection tonight. That's Friday, right. So it's like a I'll wave. Occurrence. <laughs> so Andrew, you have a great story. Tell me a little bit about how you started your lawn care company. Sure. Uh, I, I started a uh, Zeeler. Originally, it was called Zeeler Landscaping. And we started that. Uh, it was really just kind of by accident. It was a high school kid looking for something to do to, to pay for college eventually. So uh, when I was in high school, I was um, working for a property real estate company with a couple other friends and just did not like the work and the hours after football practice and said, hey, we can do this on our own real quick and we can charge, we can make ourselves probably uh, double the hourly wage if we just uh, ask friends and family. So that, that was really the beginning. Then a little bit later on, some opportunities came um, from networking as far as uh, when I was working in a hockey pro shop, learned how to mow grass and uh, took that opportunity right as I was going to college and said, hey, uh, now all of a sudden we'll be landscapers and lawnmowers. Uh, very professional uh, from what we think of right now, but it's, it's the right. story of a lot of people in our industry. And uh, took that with the whole idea that I'd have an opportunity to pay for college and then at the end, hopefully sell off a couple contracts, sell off some equipment, put a down payment on a house and uh, go on with my career. Uh, fell in love with building teams and the excitement of running a business. And so got heavily involved in NALP and Aileron here locally in Ohio um, and started to really understand what it meant to professionalize a business and started taking those, uh, those opportunities. And through that, we, we learned that lawn care was going to be really the best focus, most scalable opportunity for us. And so we started six years ago, that transition into becoming a fully uh, focused lawn care company. And so why, why the allure towards just the lawn care? What, what are the things about lawn care that, that you like over the construction side of the business? Sure. So as we were, um, as we were researching this over and over, we, what we were most intrigued by was the scalability of lawn care. So right. once, we, once we were able to put together the model, um, put all of our processes and procedures in place, we knew that we could, um, we could scale the business using uh, traditional marketing methods. We could take it to other cities. We could grow pretty much wherever we wanted to um, with that model. And so uh, outside of that, we also looked at it was at the time it seemed easier to find team members because we could pay them more and we could also uh, afford to give them better benefits. So we knew that in order to scale any business, you have to be able to scale people. And so we wanted to build a place that was going to be attractive to team members in the future. So smartly said, Andrew. And as, as we all know, you know, I didn't know this when I was in my 20s, but the equity in the business is in the reoccurring revenue. And, you know, the, the transactional nature of what you do and its scalability, it, it plays right into that perfectly. Um, and we all know that a business, the more reoccurring revenue a business has, the more that business is worth. That's, that's just the economics of it. Um, when did you really start to grow and what were, what were some of the key things that enabled you to grow? Because I know you've had some tremendous growth in the last several years. Yes. Um, you know, I, we attribute a lot of the growth to getting focused, number one. So uh, instead of having a lot of service lines uh, trying to keep our landscape maintenance, uh, residential and commercial going and get into lawn care, we decided we needed to kind of clear the board and we needed to get super focused on what we were going to do. And so that was probably the, the first thing that really kicked it off. Um, we had we'd sold off all of our residential maintenance, the commercial side. Um, we kept a few key team members on that we thought uh, we could, they could kind of work with us and, and start to launch the lawn care business. Some of those are still with us today. Um, so that was the beginning. Um, outside of that, growth really has happened through developing leaders and, and building our leadership team. So not trying to have Andrew and Desine build the business alone, 
but knowing that it was absolutely key that we brought in some talent that knew more than we did in the in the area and in the space. Um, and then with that, we we doubled down on networking and getting involved in our association networking as well as with a peer group. So at the end of the day, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Um, who is this person you speak of uh, named Desine? <laughs> Desine is my wife, and she's our she's the all star of the business. She um, she does a fantastic job. She is the president of the business and runs uh, the day to day. Uh, operations. We, we do some of those, some of those things bleed lines and we do them together, but ultimately uh, our leaders report to her and she does a fantastic job of, of driving uh, our, our, um, our focus and where we want to be in 2030. So our, our BHAG, our big, hairy, audacious goal. She, she is a lovely lady. So um, you're, you're very fortunate. So these big, hairy, audacious goals, your BHAG, tell us a little bit about the goals you have for the next few years. Where are you trying to go? Sure. So we, we set uh, about six years, yeah, six years ago, we set out and uh, said we have to put a big goal way out there and understand where do we want to end up? What does uh, success look like? It might, it might not be uh, real clear, but we need to put something out there. And so we said, um, we think we could go to uh, 20,000 customers. And it started there. We said, okay, let's, what do we have to do to get to 20,000 customers? And we said, wait, we're missing something within that goal. We need our team members because without our team members, there's no way we're ever going to get there. It's just a pipe dream. So we added to that goal, 20,150 made the number. But we asked ourselves, what are we really doing? Are we doing lawn care? Are we just making grass green and killing weeds? Or are we doing something different? And what we came to is that what we're really out to do is make life more enjoyable. And so we make life more enjoyable every day for all of our customers that we service, and we make life more enjoyable for the team members that are helping us get there. So our BHAG at 2030 is by 2030, we'll make 20,150 lives more enjoyable. And so that sets the tone for all of the decisions made each year, each quarter um, on what we need to do in order to uh, hit that goal. The, the passion for your business and your vision just radiates it. Like I can see it in your eyes and the smile on your face. Um, it's exciting. It is. And I, I love how strategic you are because so many lawn care operators, as we well know, Andrew, not all of them, but many of them, they just wander aimlessly through life. They don't put meaning to the work and they don't go backwards like you did. Like, this is where we want to go. And these are the things I'm going to have to methodically, the steps I'm going to have to methodically take to get there. Um, we got a few more minutes here. A great interview. Thank you. Love your charisma. What's the biggest mistake you've made in, in, in the last few years in this growth? Is there anything that you could share that would help our, our viewers? Yeah, I, I'd say the biggest mistake is not um, improving our leadership team quick enough, right? So we all recognize at times when, uh, when especially when a business is growing really fast, um, we all can grow out of our, um, can grow out of what we do best, um, at times. Right. And, um, I think as, as a leader for me, it would be recognizing that early enough, uh, even with the high, high paced growth is saying, okay, what are we going to need two and three years out? Because we know it's going to take at least a year to either, uh, create a new leadership position in order to fill a new skill set, pull things off of someone, uh, put them on to, into a more focused role. Um, we really ran into that where we were having one person do a whole bunch of things for a while. They were sales and customer service, uh, and they were also doing production. Right. And we had to split those roles. Um, that, that was one example. And so we had to get people that could be experts in each one of those categories. And we took a little bit longer to do that because we were too focused on uh, cash and too, uh, too conservative maybe on that. Now, at the time, it didn't feel very conservative, uh, but you know, right. it's, it, looking back at it, uh, I would say it's the, the faster that you can get your roles to be focused and experts within those roles, uh, you really have a chance for explosion of growth and, and for your team to be happier as well. Um, you know, the, the team member that was doing that once we took uh, some of the, some load off his plate, Manny flourished in other areas and has, has done a fantastic job and, and it's going really well. And as we, we pull in new leaders from outside, a good mix of uh, leaders growing up through within the business and then those coming from outside, it's, it's really uh, going well. 
you know, I want to pay you a compliment and I, and I hope it doesn't come out as condescending to the rest of our viewers. But um, when I think of you, Andrew, I, I see you driving around in your black car. Um, <laughs> and what is unique about that is most owners of a lawn care or a landscaping company, I'm saying most, they drive a truck, it's got their name on it. Um, they kind of look like they're doing the work. And you've always, um, whenever I've met you, you look like a businessman that's focused on vision and other things. You're not um, tactically um, doing a lot of those things. You're letting your people do them. And, and I think my takeaway from watching you is you've learned at a pretty young age that somebody's got to work on the business, not in the business. And if you don't take time to think about this stuff, if you don't empower the rest of your people to take to take ownership and things and go with it, you're not going to have time to do those things. But I think the other thing that I find in our work with the owners and leaders of landscaping, lawn care companies all across the country is that that's what the team wants. They don't want you doing their stuff. They want to take the ball and run with it. And we just don't give them the opportunity. And you clearly have done that. Your, your uh, humbleness there and saying that I probably didn't develop and move fast enough with the leadership team. Uh, that, that is a great concept to get your arms around. I hope everyone's listening to that. So appreciate your time. Got a couple things to wrap it up with on somewhat of a fun note. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Favorite guilty pleasure. Oh, favorite guilty pleasure. Ice cream. Okay. Android or iPhone? iPhone all the way. Okay. Golf or hockey? Golf. Okay. What's your handicap? Uh, five, nine index. That's pretty good. Mine's my clubs. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite thing to do with your family? Um, I would say, uh, camping in Pisgah what and is, boating at, at North Lake. Sorry. They all kind of go together. What's, what's the second thing you said? Uh, boating at North Lake. Okay. Terrific. Um, yep. and then lastly here, if there's, if there's something you could share with everyone, what would it be? I mean, if it's just whatever it is, any kind of statement you want to share, what, what, is, what do you want Andrew Zeeler to be remembered for? <laughs> um, you know, uh, one of the first people that helped me tremendously said, find a way to give back. And, um, and that can take on a lot of forms. Some might think that you have to be an expert in order to give back. Um, and that's not necessarily the case. For me, it was uh, involvement in NALP by raising your hand and volunteering. And, um, and so I would, I would tell you that you will make an impact on others that you don't really realize, but at the same time, you will tremendously find a way to grow yourself um, by volunteering. And so uh, get involved, meet people. Don't be afraid that somebody's going to get your trade secret that's going to end your, end your career because uh, there's, there's plenty of work out there and just get involved and help each other and you'll, you'll do very well. Andrew, I think I'm about 15 years older than you, and I listen to you speak with clarity and wisdom, and you're right. Uh, I find here in our hometown of Dayton, Ohio, and, and I know if it goes on here in Dayton, it goes on everywhere else, people think that the way you make an impact is by donating money or giving people money. And, and that's an easy way to give back. That's just writing a check. The hard way to give back and the real way to give back is to volunteer and take time and get involved. Uh, you were the past president of NALP. I know you're active in various lawn care uh, associations, and uh, I'm grateful to know you. You've made a great impact today sharing your wisdom. Um, I know you're on your vacation with your family. I'll spring the beans, uh, spill the beans there. Go no enjoy them. You are a great young leader, and I thank you for your time today. Thank you, Marty. It was a great time. Always great to talk to you. Have a great right. day. Have a great day. Bye -bye. I'll see you at the stop sign.